We are pleased to begin the brand, a brand new chapter today, which is the third chapter of Shaykh al which begins actually after all these words and these truths coming from the first and second chapter of Shaykh al Again, this is the new segment we began um, relatively recent. And the Al Terebe, again, is the gateway of Yichud Ve'emuno, as we explained generally in the very beginning and a bit since of this unique study. It's the gateway which we enter. The Al Terebe pretty much um, opened a unique door and allowed every human being, particularly every year, to enter into this Yichud, to become this this oneness, rather, this oneness with the Kodesh Baruch Hu and the faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but it's not about information, it's really a learning Shaykh Lemona from beginning to the end, really it's 12, 12 chapters, we're on a journey, um, and this journey literally allows the Yid to become, to appreciate it, not only as a, um, as, as it's not about the information, but it's about transformation, it's a transformative experience, because Altarev really brings us into the, into the spirit of Achtus Hashem. It's not something we, we say, proclaim, but it's really, we become, we become more than attached to it. It becomes part of our psyche, if you will. It becomes, al really brings us into the Achtus Hashem, that we become part of, like we can appreciate Achtus Hashem, the oneness of Hashem, like we can appreciate anything else in Gash, in the Gashmi of Elam Hazah. Like no one has to tell someone, this is a table. It just is and needs not explanation. It's something you see and appreciate. The Achtus Hashem, which is presented in these chapters, are, are, is uh, that unique because it's more than information. It's about truly about transformation. But again, we spoke about this in the beginning when we opened up the Shaykh, when we began the Shaykh of Amunas, we're holding the third chapter. So when he speaks about after these words and after these truths, he's, not, he's referring to you know, this information shared, the Al-Tarebbe shares with us based on this Medish Tilim and this which the Al-Tarebbe brings to the Baal Shem Tov, Pirish Baal Shem Tov, that La'ilum Hashem Tvarchonitza Bashamayim, that Hashem, your words are constantly there in heaven. Meaning to say that this is the the um, that the the energy which we have Kodesh Baruch Hu created heaven and earth is not something of the past that Hashem used a specific creation to create everything. You say everything. You're talking about the the uh, these the millions and billions beyond that. Understandably, even within Elam Haza, every species. From the uh, you know the the, the world ge- is that generally there's the division of demim tzemei medaber the inanimate the the world of vegetation or more broadly the botanical world then you have the animal world and then you have on top of that the medaber the human the human being <clears throat> and the detail the specific uh, makeup of every creation is with precision. It's a certain energy which comes from Akkadj Borchu to create that um, that uh, part of creation. I think it's specific appearance, makeup, uh, function, style, etc. And as we learned that it wasn't only when Hashem created the world, He planned this and with this maximum precision and extended from Himself a certain configuration of words which is Mahaba, which creates that item. And like we say, this is simple. The Parsha Bereshis, which there you have the ten Mamores, Bereshis included. This is Basar Mamores Nivra Elam, that Hashem spoke creation into being. By Yemelikim here, Hashem says, Shall there be light? Hashem says, Shall there be the Rakia, which he focuses over here, the firmaments, and so on. And the, that speech which Hashem spoke, in other words, those words, and the combination of words and the configuration of these words, this becomes the energy of this which Hashem create. But and the, this is and, and the the Loshna um, Kaidish, and not to take time again to repeat. You could uh, we usually mention. Perhaps we'll just mention it quickly again. You see all the previous information on the you could and on the original website is the tanyaonline.com we always mention it for the newcomers tanyaonline.com 
where you can find all the, these, generally all these classes from the very beginning, even the previous segment, but in Shari Chavumun, which we're dealing with over here, it's a click away and the class comes up and this class is similar to this class, all the previous classes come up in a way that there's a separate scroll bar also in order to f- easily follow the class. So you can see all this information, which also is basically saying that in Lashon HaKadosh, it's not just a language which is a Lashon HaSkemi, but people have established that this is going to mean this, is going to mean that, just for the sake of communication, but there's no intrinsic connection between the word, its pronunciation, to the item it is supposed to identify, which it does identify, <clears throat> or the action it does identify when it comes to when it comes to lashon hakodesh, the, the lashon hakodesh. This is the 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 words which Hashem created the entire world, the entire creation. So, for example, you find the word evan. There's something intrinsic of the word evan with the stone, and that configuration of alav bay is known with its the the way it's pronounced and so on. That is the energy which Hashem created the stone. And that's why, and, and the stone ultimately is created with that exact image and style and, and function, function, I mean, to, the, the style, let's call it, of the stone, its image, and its strength is all because of the word Evan, which enters that energy, the word Evan is an example that enters into that, into that, Material and therefore, or that creates the material for that more more so, and creates the stone with that exact image, and appearance and strength. Even though we did mention we don't find the word Evan as Sarvamaris, but that'll be explained in the first chapter because the the, the the interchanging of the words and the combinations, the the uh, n- numeric value, everything uh, is part of this development which ultimately creates every single creation we see in front of our eyes. But the Alter Rebbe brings from the Baal Shem Tov, which in essence is based on the Medish Tilim, or Pirish Baal Shem Tov, that it's not only that Hashem used that energy to create, again, Hashem spoke creation into being, as Basar Mamoris Nivra Ha'elam, Bidvar Hashem Shamaim Nasu, heaven was created with the words of Hashem, over Ruach Piv Kol Tzavam, it's the spirit of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's mouth, that is what is the, the energy which keeps creation, uh, which uh, which Hashem created the world, but more so, not only then, in the six days of creation, that Hashem's words, it's constantly there, and that is constantly creating every single item, the way Hashem created this item of this creation, in the very beginning of creation, in the six days of creation, we could all appreciate before Hashem created that particular creation, it didn't exist, it wasn't something we just had, like the shell or the outer image, and Hashem kind of filled it in. You know, you have sometimes the overall um, image, and you're asked to take the paintbrush and just fill it in, make it look good, and make it look kind of even real. And nothing like that obviously was, because before Hashem created the world, there was nothing, there was no thing at all. Nothing. We mentioned many times that we can't appreciate the whole phenomenon of nothing, because we're part of time and place and so on. Mokim is man, which is ultimately Eilam, the combination of Mokim is man, place and time. We're part of it. We can't appreciate the notion that a world before time, what the clock wasn't ticking. No, the clock wasn't ticking. There was no phenomenon of time. We can't adequately appreciate it, understandably, because we're part of it. But conceptually, we can really appreciate the fact that before Shem created, there was nothing. Before Shem created the entire world, or every, when we focus in on a specific creation, it didn't exist simply didn't exist. <clears throat> its existence came about because Hashem spoke it into creation, into being. Hashem said, Yehi Rokia shall, be the fir- shall there be the firmament. So that energy, in other words, Rokia, the Reish, the Kuf, the Ayyud, and the Ayyud, that energy is what enters, it is what creates the Rokia, the firmament. And I say that because the Trebid uses this time and again, but it's every part of creation. <clears throat> That's the way they came about. So the, when the put says lo oilam, in other words, and that's the only chayis, that's the only reason why it exists in the exact fashion and manner that it exists. So when we say lo oilam Hashem Baruchu Nitzav Hashem it's constantly Hashem is. It's not only something that occurred in the six days of creation; it just is. Hashem has to re-pump this very energy into that created being in order that it should exist 
exactly the way it is. It doesn't it's irrelevant the fact that it looks like this. It looks the same um, since the six day, the time and period of six days of creation. It's irrelevant. It's Hashem has to recreate it every single moment. If not, it would return to the state of total nothingness, to the state of Ayin Vyefes. And again, what is the proof to this? Not that it brings a certain proof. First of all, as we mentioned, uh, again, it's not fair to take time from this of this class. How it just makes so much sense. The whole that Hashem has to recreate and repump this very same energy in the, of the Asar and Mamaris into creation which should continue to exist. And more so, that Rebbe even brings from and the, 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 the text of Teira uh, in, in the whole um, detail in, in, in uh, uh, relating the miracle of Kriyas Yamsov, the splitting of the sea, that in the time when Am Yisrael left the exodus of Egypt, in the time Am Yisrael left Mitzrayim, so that was the famous miracle that Hashem split the sea for them. And what does the Teira say? That there was a, an intense eastern wind blowing on the water, Yet the water stood up like a wall. And had it not been so, the water, the wind would not blow with that perfect, um, uh, um, in, 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 with that intensity, rather, um, the wall, the water would not stand up like a wall. It would continue expressing its own nature. Water would flows, not doesn't stand, waters don't stand up like a wall. Especially for so many people to cross the Yamsov. It had to have been very firm at the time they crossed. Medrash says so many miracles that it was really, the, the land dried up within moments. It just removed any wetness, kind of was pushed to the side and any dampness or wetness, or the slightest dampness pushed to the side, it stood up like a, like a almost like a perfect wall. So, as al points out, that even changing two natures, Hashem had to just pump that wind, or blow that wind, in order that the water should stand like a wall. Because the phenomenon of anything standing upright exists, is embedded in, into creation, the wall stands upright on its own. It's just, it just happens to be the nature of the water is not so. And Akash had to reform, modify one nature to another. There had to be the, 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 the pump of that wind, if you will, in order that the wall should get up. And so Hamish al says how much more so, the whole phenomenon of creation, of bringing something from nothing, not just a, modifi- not just a modification of a nature, but the entire mitzvah, the entire entity, the entire existence of something is how much more so that Hashem has to continuously pump his creation, pump his energy into creation, in order that creation, again we say creation, not only the entirety of creation, but every specific created being. Hashem has to, uh, again, uh, re- re- reinvigorate in every single moment, because if not, uh, re- re- recreate and bring that into existence from a ta- state of Ayin into a state of Yesh, from total nothingness into the state of something, the way it, it, it is, the way it appears, and the way it functions. And if Hashem would pull back, would not not only pull back, doesn't have to actively pull back, but Hashem would not continue to create, it would return to a state of nothingness, total nothingness, which is the ex nihilo phenomenon, from nothing into something. And of course, what pulls back, it returns to its nothingness. So the Altarab says, again, you can see it in Pedic Bays very clearly, Aleph, and then in Pedic, namely Pedic Bays, this idea of the total dependability of every single creation. To the Dvar Hashem and Bruches Mahava Mechayim Mekayim say in the words of Hakadosh Baruch Hu the energy of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which is the the Asar Mamoris, which brings everything into existence time and again. Amechad, like we say every single day, the Amechadish Betuvi Becholim Tamei Masavereshu that Hakadosh Baruch Hu brings Betuvi with His kindness the every single day and not only every single day, every single moment, the entire Masavereshis. Tomin on a constant basis into basis into being. So now we can see the total dependability of every single nivra, every single created being, to this Dvar Hashem, which is Mahava Machai Mekai Mesa, this which brings it life and existence, and without it, 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 it doesn't exist. So in essence, even with it, kind of, you can say, and this is again the point over here, it also doesn't exist. It doesn't have... Well, the, it's an independability. 
It doesn't have its independence at all for that matter. It's not, okay, I'm here. I'm here for a second. No, because you're dependent every moment. And not only your style, like what one would say, you know, if Hashem would pull back the energy of the stone, it would kind of revert to something looking like a stone, a decay stone, or a broken stone, and a Kodesh Baruch Hu makes sure that it's intact every moment. It's not so. Then you can say, well, I exist, but I need the Dvar Hashem, the word of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, to make sure that I'm fully intact. No. The Vashem pulls back the energy of the stone. The stone returns to a state of nothing. Total nothingness. In simple words, it would disappear. So when HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings this stone into being, recreates the stone with the same Dvar Hashem, which Hashem used when, this, when, in, when He created the stone in the first time at the six days of creation, and not only does it now, he does it in a second from now, and a split second from now, and again and again and again and again and again, and again and with it never stopping. And Hashem Kabiyach has to constantly do it, which is again demonstrative of the complete, total dependability of the of the stone to the Dvar Hashem. So Be'etzem, the stone is really what it really is. It is the Dvar Hashem. That's what Dalt Reb is getting at. That even when it exists, it's not it exists the firmness, the potency of the stone, that is an independent existence. And it kind of is waiting like, you know, you say, uh, just water the plants. You don't water the plants, the plants will uh, get ruined. It, will, it, will, it won't have that freshness, if you will. Granted, but you don't water the plants, the plants don't disappear. So the plants are mitzias. There's something you have to water them in order that they should be able to be to bring out their maximum uh, life and appearance and appearance and so on and beauty. But they don't disappear if you don't water them. But in this case, Vakulj Barko doesn't. So the, the you so the, 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 the water definitely contributes to the development, the beauty of the, these plants or these flowers. They say plants. They say beauty naturally in the context of flowers is an example or any plant, that obviously with the time, if, there, if it's grain and, you know, it doesn't rain, and they're not watered, obviously they will decay and not produce what you're looking forward that this, um, this planting, this sowing should produce because it needs water. But if you don't water that specific day, they won't disappear because they're not dependent fully on the water. In other words, they exist and water Naturally, they do depend on their total development on rain and water and so on. But it's something that if you don't do so, and if you don't water them, they'll eventually lose out on um, on the, uh, in other words, the, this which it would bring to mankind a full, um, a, a, a field, for example, how much it would contribute to mankind uh, would naturally be compromised meaning to say that it won't give out its full produce, and if it does, it wouldn't be the real good um, production which one would anticipate. The one who sows the field, as an example, he needs that, that enough rain, and enough water, if it's not rain, irrigation of water, in order to keep them intact, in order that this is the point of the entire um, agricultural world which again it's bringing about the best to production the best result to, for production best result in production but the day it doesn't rain as an example the grain doesn't disappear because the, the grain is independent an independent entity than the rain the rain would contribute to its development and I can say this it take a few moments to explain this because it's so the opposite, it's so not so when it comes to Hashem's creation. It's not that, okay, Hashem will, you know, service the world. We mentioned the other day, you have a sophisticated machine. From time to time, you have to send someone or the company would have part of its, uh, its service is that it periodically services this machine. HaKadosh Baruch Hu would water the, let's call it water the world in order that it should... Uh, bring out its best production. It's not at all so. 
you're talking about every second bringing something from a state of yesh, to, from a state of I into a state of yesh, from a state of total nothingness to a state of existence, meaning to say that even when it is, it truly is not. That's the point over here. It, what it is, it's the Dvar Hashem, which is Mahav Machai Mekai say. It's the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is bringing it every moment into existence. So when you look at the stone, what it really is, it's the Dvar Hashem Machai Mekai Mehav say. It's the, the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the energy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, <coughs> energy from the Asar Mamaris, which is bringing it to life into existence. So what really is it? Is it a stone or it's Dvar Hashem? <coughs> In essence, it is the Dvar Hashem question is why do we see a stone why do we see a tree if the whole everything about it is the Dvar Hashem the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but that's what the Altareb is dealing with let's look at what what is real and let's see perhaps the reason why we don't identify why we see it as in a kind of an independent created being like the stone or the tree if its whole reality is the Dvar Hashem which gives it life and existence why don't we identify that and why does it look so real? And why do we have to learn about it in Tanya, if you will, based on this Medish Tilmu and Upirish Habal Shem Tav of Leilu Hashem Dvarach and Nitzvah Shemayim to know that really it's not a stone, it's really the Dvar Hashem is the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu just bringing it into life and into existence. If that's its only, <clears throat> um, if that's what it's really all about, apparently that should have come to the surface on the onset. For that matter, it says, Mashiach will come, Vero kol basar Every flesh will be able, Ayin b'ayin yiru, or I will be able to see the Dvar Hashem, the word of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the energy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now the famous expression, Mashiach will come, and the difference of Golos and Gaula, Golos, in the state of Golos, Elukus is b'ishachos, and Elam is b'pshitos, or to say in the, in the right order, Elam is b'pshitos, what we see, what is obvious is the Elam, the world, in every item in the world, and the lakus is bishachos. Oh, this is a novelty. Yeah, I just learned about it in Shaykh Bimoni. Oh, that's interesting. It's pers- it sends a different perspective on my whole approach, my whole appearance and appreciation, or on my whole appreciation of any matter of Elam Hazai. You look at it so differently. That you're not here because you were there a second before. It's because Hashem is giving you the chayas. In essence, what you really are is the Dvar Hashem In other words, this what you are is really. This, what Hashem, it's the energy of HaKadosh Baruch which is really bringing you every moment from a state of total nothingness, not a mediocre nothingness, total nothingness into being. But it's information. It's not the way, it's not my first approach, not my first appreciation of any matter. Mashiach will come, it says the opposite. The cause will be bipshitas. And the godly reality is this what we're going to be able to identify within everything, within every, all of creation. Or in generally, the ability that the eye should be able to, would be able to see eye be eye and you know, they would be able to see a locus. and even Rokobasar, even the flesh would be able to identify the truth, which is the godly reality. And the Ilam is to say, you know what, behind this there's looks like a stone and that looks like a tree. But what would the first approach would be the godly energy which mm, exists in both in the stone and the tree in every part of creation. That's why for that matter <clears throat> Just to add over here, it says, "Amol ha'odes deyas Hashem k'mayim liyom mechasim." It says, "The world will be filled with the knowledge of, of God, like the water covers the ocean bed." What does that mean? Because when you look at Elam in 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 the world of of, of Yabosha, not in the um, not in the Yam and the sea and the waters. So what you see, you see, is all the created beings, and then you know that everything has a source. Everything has a so to say, a, a channel to which it lives off, man lives off um, the grain, lechem levav and yeshisa, then every, every part of creation has its source where it nourishes its life and, and energy from. But what you see is first you see the nivra, you see the created being, and then you try to find, you, eventually you try to make the, the connected dots, you see that it's receiving its energy from this or from that, if it's the animal, and if it's the mammal, and if it's the ant, and if it's the ultimately the human being. When you look in the water, what do you see? The fish are also, there's a whole world in the water. The Gemara says, Whatever's on dry land is in the water. 
And we say whatever to the extent the Gemara says every every existing creature in on dry land has its counterpart in water. There's a whole world in there. But and and where do they receive their chayis from? They receive their chayis from the water. They receive their energy from uh, from water. Take a fish out of water, it cannot live at all, for that matter. So their energy comes from the water, not only every fish, but every single created creation within the water, to the extent everything draws the energy from the water. Take it out of the water, it would it would it would die. It would totally expire. But what do you see when you look at the ocean? You just see the water. The first appearance, you see the water. You see the chayis. You see the energy which is giving the, the whole water, uh, the, the kingdom, if you will, or the whole entire um, uh, creation which exists within the waters, their chayis, their energy. And that's what you see first. And then you look into it, you say, you know, in this water, you start delving into it, you say, oh, there's this fish and that fish. And then, and to the extent you come to the realization, and based on this Gemara, that there's all the different creatures, everything has its counterpart, everything in the land has its counterpart in, in, in these waters. And then you realize, wow, there's so much of creation in this water, but what do you see first? You see the energy which gives all these creations their life, that's what comes to mind, not only comes to the mind, but comes to the a physical eye first. And that's one of the meanings of Hashem additional to the simple meaning that there will be the overwhelming knowledge of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, like the entire, the water covers the ocean bed, but more so, what will be of our first appreciation, which will be, will be the Dvar Hashem, the life and energy, which is giving the world its energy. And then... We'll try to find, if we look very hard, we will find it's the, the actual creation, this particularly created being, that particular particular created entity. We would see and be able to even appreciate its style, its makeup, how it functions and so on. But what would come first? Come first, we will see the emes. And the emes is the Dvar Hashem. Based on again everything we just explained yet again, but the message of Aleph and Base. But the question is, why don't we see it now? There must be a reason why we don't see it now. If that's the truth of it, why is it concealed from the eye, even the sensory vision and the sensory appreciation and vision? So this is all Tareb is dealing with. Because if you think about these words of the Achri Advarva Mesaiva, these words of in these truth, Kol Maskal of every understander, every every intellect, rather every intellect, Yavin Lashuri, every intellectual, we on Yavin Lashuri will be able to thoroughly understand the Shakal Nibrabi Yeshu Be Emis Nashavlaim Bafis Mamush. That every existing entity, every existing creation and and an and entity and yes is truly in essence nothing as no thing at all in comparison to the energy which is giving it the ability to exist to live and to just be on a constant basis and it produces it from a state of nothingness to a state of something to a state of being. In other words, we can appreciate the insignificance of the yesh in the face of the ayin. But we say insignificance, the total insignificance. Because its whole mitzias, its whole being, is just because of the Dvar Hashem, which is Mahav Machayez. As we explain in length. So why is it that every part of creation appears to us like a mitzias, like something? You look at the stone, you don't see the Dvar Hashem. You look at the tree, you don't see the Dvar Hashem. And same thing, everything in creation, as the Altarebbe says, why don't we see it that way? If that's the truth of it, we should have primarily see, see it 
exactly in that fashion because that's its only existence. Its sole existence. It's solely because Hashem is right now giving it that energy that, or solely because the Dvar Hashem is extending itself into that creation. That's why it exists. And if Hashem would pull back, it would return to nothingness. So that's what it really is. So why, do, why doesn't it appear that way? And why can't we see it that way? If it was so, apparently we should have seen that. We know it is so based on everything that Al-Tarab explained. So why isn't it apparent? Why isn't it something that comes to one's eye on, at first, on the onset, and, and this is what the answer is, It's because somewhat it was removed from our ability to see and appreciate the Kech Hashem and the spirit of Hashem which exists in that creation. But if it would give, be given the permission of the eye to see, or the hasigan to appreciate as chayz veruchin should be called over the energy and the spiritual flow which exists within every creation, hashefeiba, which comes and flows of from a kodesh baruch hu mitzvah pi hashem veruch piv, of which comes of a kodesh baruch hu's mouth, kaviyachol so to say, which is the dvar Hashem and the spirit of Hashem's mouth. The physicality of creation, the mundanity of creation, the tangibility of creation would not be appeared in to our eyes at all. We would not see it that way. In other words, what Hashem establishes that He takes away from us to see. I'll give me just a quick example of the text of Tata. For example, the story with Bilam. He was on his donkey. What was it? That what was the basis of that whole occurrence that the donkey was able to see the angel, Bilam was not able to see the angel. And that was that whole back and forth that ultimately the dialogue between Bilam and, and his Khmer and his donkey. But the angel was standing in front of the donkey, and the donkey saw the angel. So if he was really there, why didn't Bilam see the angel? And that would kind of eliminate a lot of the issues then and and that whole, you know, the whole back and forth of Bilam and his donkey. The answer, not everything what it, it would exist doesn't mean that it, it, in, 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 inevitably, it's not inevitable that this which exists is, be, is perceived with the naked eye. It's just because HaKadosh Baruch Hu allows us to see what we're meant to see. And there's so much to talk about it in so many different areas, even in Nevoa, prophecies, the greatest prophets. It's all, not necessarily the, we're able to see everything, most of them at least, despite they were halachically acceptable prophets. It's just because whatever the Ebishter wanted them to see, that's what they saw. And again, there are obviously different levels of prophets. I'm not going to go into it now. But in every area, it's not because, okay, this is the way it is and this is the way it, it ought to be. So these are the in, in, indefinitely and in every single dimension of this matter, it'll always follow that same rule. Not necessarily it works that way, as we know it. And again, in every area, it's medicine and in, 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 in science. And it's just... A a a, um, a a a a a something which we can clearly appreciate that not necessarily when something is is it always identifiable. But that story with Bilam and the Chamer is so much we can we can appreciate in in this very context over here that yes that's the truth, and this similar similarly there, Bilam didn't see the angel, but what was the truth? Was there an angel standing? And blocking the way then, at that episode then, in that story then? Answer is, absolutely. It wasn't just a general appearance, like an illusion that this donkey had. There was an angel standing there, an angel sent by HaKadosh Baruch Hu to stop Hil Bilam on his tracks when he went towards Am Yisrael. Eventually, again, Hashem allowed him to go, not to go, was talking to uh, go into the story of Bilam. Um, but there was indeed an angel sent by Hashem. But Hashem did not allow, in the beginning, that, that is, 
In the end, Bilam was able to see that angels because, in the and as opposed to the beginning, Hashem decided Bilam's not going to see the angel. The donkey will. And eventually, by Yiftach Hashem, the Ebishter opened up Bilam's eyes, he was able to see the angel. So it doesn't take, so no one's going to ever say, you know, till Bilam saw the angel, there was no angel. And the donkey was having some illusion. It was an illusionary image. And when Bilam opened his eyes, he saw when Bilam was able to see the, the, the angel, that's when the angel appeared. It's not true. The angel was there all along. But Kaddish Baruch Hu took away the, the, this ability from Bilam to see the angel, and he kept it with the Chamer, the, the donkey, yes, and Bilam, no. And it's only subsequently Hashem allowed Bilam to see which pre-existed. And the same thing, this is, it wasn't given, it was taken away from us, from our eyes, and even our sensory vision, to see the emes, to see the Dvar Hashem, well, we should learn about it, even though formally, especially in the state of Golos, we don't have the ability to see things the way they are. That's the point of Golos. There's a hell in the Hester over Lukus, the concealment uh, and the cover-up over the Emes Hashem Le'elam. And it has, again, itself its broad bracket. The whole Elam is something which covers up and obscures the truth of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the Avoid of the Yid, to Megala Lukus, to reveal this which, again, pre-exists 